Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. I hope you're well, and welcome to the latest OET All Star session with myself, Scott from Swoosh English. I hope you're well, and I want everyone to start using the chat box today. Please tell me hello, where you are from, what time it is today, and what you're looking forward to most in this session today. So looking forward to seeing your comments and getting to know everyone in this session. Brief introduction to me, if you don't know me, my name is Scott, I'm the Managing Director and OET Teacher at Swoosh, and we are an OET All-Star and Premium Preparation Provider for the OET exam. We've helped over 22,000 students pass their OET exams first time with speed, certainty, and ease. So we're looking forward to helping you guys out with your OBT preparation today, regardless of when you're taking it and even how you are taking it. There's gonna be a quite an express session today. We're looking to go through the session quite quickly. So make sure, of course, that you do have some pen and paper beside you to take notes as we go throughout this session. I'm gonna just say hello to Jennifer, who has checked in today, watching from Zambia. Welcome, Jennifer, and everyone else who was showing their comments as well. So without further ado, let's get stuck into our session, a guide to part A. So guys, in this session today, we're gonna go through various aspects of reading part A, starting off with a mini quiz on part A to see what you know. We're then gonna go through and analyze and practice a few methods to assist you in scoring higher in two activities in reading part A. And there of course will be a bit of practice and a bit of an evaluation as well as it happens. Now of course, it wouldn't be like us that it's Valentine's Day. So if you're looking to take your OET preparation to the next level, we now have a Valentine's Day seal live. You can get 20% off selected OET preparation courses, and all you need is the discount love. Um, all you have to do is go to www.swooshenglish.com forward slash love. That's www.swooshenglish.com forward slash love. You can see that now in the chat box, guys. That code is coming through, and that link is coming through. Just simply follow through to that link and get access to your Swoosh English preparation course at a discount of 20% off for a limited time only by going to swooshenglish.com forward slash love. Looking forward to hopefully helping some of you guys out in a much more comprehensive strategy than these three sessions with your Swoosh English preparation. So guys, let's get started. Reading part A quits. Here are a few questions on the screen. I'm going to read them out and I want you to throw your answers into the chat box. Firstly, who can tell me how long is reading part A? Throw your comments into the chat box, guys. How long is reading part A? Throw your comments in. The second question, how many texts do you have to read for reading part A? That's question number two. How many texts do you have to read for reading part A? Throw your comments into the chat box, please. Question number three, how many question extracts are there for reading part A? So how many sets of questions do you have to answer that corresponds with the text? Throw your comments in and the comments are flying in. Very good, guys. Okay, question number four, how many topics are there? How many topics are there for reading part A that you have to answer in the exam? Throw your comments in, please. And they're coming in. You're quite quick at doing this today, guys. Nice. Question number five. How many marks are there in total for reading part A? So how many points for the entire reading section are allocated to reading part A? Let me know in the chat box how many marks are there. Nice one, guys. And the final question. What type of tasks do you have to complete? Let me know in the chat box. What type of tasks do you have to complete? for reading part A. Lovely guys, lots of you have been commenting along. Thank you very much for sending them in. This is great to see. Let's go through the answers and see how well that you have done. So reading part A, most of you I can see are correct. It is 15 minutes long. So 15 minutes are, is spent in reading part A. It is separate to reading part B and reading part C, which are separate booklets. 
So you don't really have to worry about time management in relation to the other sections, but it's still important to manage your time for reading part A. Now, answer number two, how many texts do you have to read? There are four texts for you to read labeled A, B, C, and D. Nice. Question number three, how many question extracts are there? There are typically three different types of questions that you have to answer, and they have different formats, text matching, gap fill, and short answer. Finally, how many topics are there? There's only one, only one topic that takes all four of the reading texts together, so you can keep things nice and focused. How many marks are there? There are 20 marks for reading part A, making it a crucial section that you need to get a lot of marks in. So make sure, of course, that you are hammering in your reading part A skills because a lot of marks for reading are allocated to it. Then finally, I kind of answered the question already, I suppose. What type of tasks do you have to complete? Text matching, short answer, and note fill are the questions that you have to answer. Well done, gave yourself a point or a mark for everyone that you got correct in that. So let's go through a mini exercise for our reading part A strategy. First of all, the first task that we should look at and you should look at on the day of your test as well as in your practice is the task and the skill of heading skimming. So before you read the questions, you should skim the headings and subheadings of all the four texts so you have an idea of where to find the answers. Crucially important to practice your skimming skills, skills for this section so that you are able to identify which text you think you should go to when you're searching for your details later. So let's put this into practice. Here is an example text for text A. We're gonna have a look at the topic of fractures, dislocations, and sprains today. And we're gonna look at the four different sections. So guys, skim through very quickly and take a note, what are the headings? What are the subheadings? And what are the key details that you have to have? I'm gonna be nice and quick with this because you do need to be very quick in doing this. You don't have much time on this. Take a brief note of the headings and the subheadings. I'll give you another few seconds to do so before we move on to the second example. Three, two, one. All right, text B. Once again, take a note of the headings and the subheadings. In doing this, we're going to try and get an overall gist about what the texts are about, which will help us in our time management later on when we're trying to identify the details. Also essential for the text matching activity. So once again, guys, headings and subheadings, take a note of them. Three, two, one. Text C, same thing, headings, subheadings, other important areas of note. So look at the headings and anything that's emboldened as well and take a note of them. Another few seconds, five, four, three, two, one. We're gonna get you up to shape for OET in the exam day. And then finally, text D, the same thing. What are the headings? What are the subheadings? Does it give us an idea about what the text is about, which will then allow us to select the correct text for us to start choosing the answers from? Another few seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, guys, hope you got on really well with that heading skimming exercise. So let's take all of this together and put it into a document. So. Text A, as we can see over here, the headings were fractures, dislocation, and sprain. Does it give us an idea about what we're looking to find under that text? Text B, we have simple fracture of limbs, immediate management, clinical assessment, and management. Does it give us an idea about what we're looking to find under that text too? Throw your comments in, in terms of what you think you're going to find under that. Finally, uh, not finally, sorry. The next one is text C. We have drug therapy protocol. So what do we think we're going to find under that text based on that heading? And then finally, text D. Technique for plaster back slab for arm fractures. Use same principle for leg fractures. What do we think we're going to find under that text too? 
Okay. Have a think, guys, what we're going to find. My comments would be text A looks to be a general categorization, different kinds of breakages there are. Text B talks about management of how to treat a wound. Text C is the drug therapy, so the medication you might have to do for fractures, dislocations, and sprains. And then text D is quite specific. It talks about a, a particular procedure called the back slab for arm and leg fractures. So now that we've identified what's going to be within each text, it will help us hopefully identify what the important information is going to be. So let's take that forward, guys, and put that analysis into a Part A text matching task. So based on our readings of the different headings, we should now be able to predict what the answer could be based on your skimming of your heading. So what I'll just do, guys, is make sure you've got these notes written down on a page. We will take them forward, or you can take a screenshot, guys. A screenshot might be handy. I'll just bring that up nice and large on the screen. Have a look and see if that will help you. But we have to move on very, very quickly so that we can use this for the next section. Okay, right, let's get stuck in to the next section. So guys, as I said, what do we think the text matching task could be, the answers could be, based on our understanding of the headings by themselves? So you have your notes, guys. We have text A, we have text B, we have text C, and we have text D. Match the headings based on your predictions only to one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, okay? We'll do the first one together. So we have procedures for delivering pain relief. Procedures for delivering pain relief. Based on our understanding of the headings by themselves, which one do we think is the answer? A, B, C, or D? Send your comments in, guys, to the chat box. A, B, C, or D? Tell me what you think your answers are. We're just seeing how accurate we can be with predictions only, and we can see how good that we can be as a whole for this. Okay. All right, guys, some comments are coming in. And the majority seem to think that C is correct, as Matsuvitz has also said here. But keep the comments coming in. Do we think it's A, B, C, or D? Okay, we've got a few different answers coming in, but I'm happy to see the majority of you think it is, it is actually C. And that would be correct, guys. The answer actually is C, because C talked about drug therapy protocol, aka pain relief and medication. So well done to those that got that one correct. So I'm going to give you all now a couple of minutes, guys, to go through two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and select your own answers. One, maybe two minutes, depending on how I feel. Fill out the rest of the answers. I'll come back and we'll go through them together. Based on your understanding of the headings, what do you think the answer is going to be? Good luck.
and five, four, three, two, and one, guys. Okay, well, we've gone through it. I hope you have your answers. Let's see what you think the answers actually were. So we'll go through them. So number two, the answer number two, the procedure to follow when sprint splinting a fractured limb was D. That talked about sprinting a fractured limb was talking about that back slab feature. Thanks for sending your comments in, guys. Please send your answers in to the chat box. We want to see what your answers all were. Number three, what to record when assessing a patient was B. We talked about the management process. Well done to those who got that one correct as well. Number four, the terms used to describe different types of fractures. A, if you remember, the technique talked about dislocations, fractures, and sprains. Those are the headings and the clues were in those headings themselves. Five, the practitioners who administer analgesia was C. Analgesia being a medication, a protocol that matched with C nice and correctly. Six, what to look for when checking an injury. B, management of an injury was correct. And finally, seven, how fractures can be caused. That was A, based in the different kinds of fractures as a whole. So well done, guys. We actually did this technique very well. We were able to guess what we thought the right answer was based on reading of the headings. So if used appropriately, this could be a great time-saving activity for your reading part A exercises. Now, I'm gonna say, do not simply put down your answer by looking at the headings alone. Take a brief moment to skim through the activities afterwards to confirm because you want to have a two points of reference. However, you can use this activity to quickly identify which text that you're looking at and base your answers on the overall skimming first and then clarify with some scanning details afterwards. But well done. You've just done activity well, which will save you time on reading part A if you actually get pretty good at it. So congratulations, guys. Well done. Now, we've done really well so far. I hope you're enjoying this class today, guys. Let me know in the chat box if you're enjoying the class. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up, give us a love, give us some sort of emoji if you are enjoying this class. Myself and the OET team will be happy to hear that you are enjoying this class. So let's now move on, guys, to the second activity day, which is going to go on We've done the text matching. We're now going to have a look at the use of English gap fill prediction. So we're going to analyze a gap fill part A task below, which is one of the two, three different types of activities you have to do. And we're going to predict what we think the answer might be. We're going to analyze what type of word or words and numbers could actually fill the gap, which will hopefully make us more um, accurate in choosing our correct answers, guys. So have a look at exercises number 15 to 20. It says at the top, complete each of the sentences 15 to 20 with a word or short phrase from one of the texts. So a word or a short phrase, make sure you identify and know what they are. Each answer may include words, numbers, or both. So we typically have up to about three words in these gap fills. It can be a combination of words, and numbers. So what makes logical sense to you? Before we get into this activity, guys, we're going to actually try and guess what we think the answer might be based on our use of English. So let's look at activity number 15 as an example. It says, falling on an outstretched hand is a typical cause of a blank of the elbow. So we've got a large gap here. We've got a that comes before, and we have of that comes after. What kind of words or articles or sections of the English language, fragments of a sentence, could be inside this gap? Well, we analyze a is an article. Typically, an article comes before a noun or a noun phrase. So we know that a noun is going to have to be in there. But what kind of noun? Is it going to be a word? Is it going to be, well, of course it's going to be a word. Is it going to be an object? Is it going to be a place? Is it going to be a name? Etc. Etc. 
Think about what of usually comes before to, typically a noun or a noun phrase. So we've analyzed it. We know it's going to be a noun, but it's going to be something related to the elbow. What happened to the elbow? What, ad, what words and phrases inside the text itself can help give us an indication about what it might be? Okay, let's do the same with 16. Upper limb fractures should be elevated by means of a what? We can see, once again, that we have an article. We're looking for a noun or a noun phrase inside this section too. Indication about what kind of noun it might be? We'll look at the key words in the sentence. We have elevated here. Elevated by what? So we might find elevated in the text. We might find something around it too. Likewise, for 17, make sure the patient isn't wearing any noun, wearing being a key word, clothing or adornment we're looking at. So some sort of noun about what has been worn on the part of the body where the back slab is going to be placed. Number 18, check to see whether swollen limbs are what or increasing in size. So we have an auxiliary here and we have the gerund here. So we're we looking for another kind of gerund here. Yes, we are. We're looking for verb plus ing to match the verb plus ing here. This is why use of English is really important for this section and getting quick at it is super essential for both your time management and also for the accuracy of your answers. Number 19, in a plaster black slab, there is a layer of what closest to the skin, a layer of something closest to the skin. Once again, a noun, and we're looking for a medical adornment here. Finally, number 20, patients, patients aged what and over shouldn't be given the higher dosages of pain relief. What kind of word do we think might go here? Well, we're looking for a noun, but likely a number or an age, because age is the key word here. So guys, this is essential for the gap fill. We need to identify very quickly in our analyzing what kind of word or words might be missing. This will help us with our accuracy and improve with our scanning skills to cancel out all the noise and put what we think is the correct answer in the, in the, um, in the answer booklet. So we analyze that together. Let's see now if we can actually take this forward. So don't forget your headings, guys. Take a quick picture of this or write it down on a notepad. Don't forget your headings. You will need these going into the next exercise too because it will help us identify based on the overall, um, the overall understanding of what the text is about, what the topic is and what the theme is. So we think that we see a lot of language related to fractures, dislocations and sprains. Great. We can probably identify that text to start looking at and going through in detail for the the types of word. If we see um, a sentence or a phrase talking about fracture of limbs and management, we go to text B. If we see a particular exercise talking about drug therapy protocol, aka medication, then we go to text C. Or we see a particular answer talking about the back slab. And if we go back here, guys, we can see quite a few of them are talking about back slab, aka number 19 here, for example. Then we know we have to go straight towards text D which is the technique for plaster backslap. So don't forget about these headings. That should be the first point of reference because that will eliminate 75% of the incorrect texts and allow us to choose the correct text as a whole. Now, guys, let's complete the activity together. So don't forget that you have your nouns uh, and your verbs and your nouns and your numbers and age. We've already identified these as the potential words that we're looking for. Make sure you take a note of these, okay? I'm now going to bring the texts up on the screen. Now I can only keep one of these on the screen. So what I recommend is you take a picture of this section here of the texts, take a very quick picture of these, and you can reference these on your phone or somewhere else. And I will keep the answers on the screen for everyone to see. So I'll keep the answers on the screen for everyone to see, but please take a picture of these activities here. Please take a picture of the four texts. Once you've taken a picture, please type done and send it into the chat box. So please take a picture of text A, text B, text C, or text D. Once you've done that, 
send done in the chat box. And enough people have said done, I will be happy then to bring up the answers on the screen so you can reference those on your screen and reference them somewhere else. So I'll give everyone just a little bit more time to do that. Thank you to those that have done that so far. And then we can take it across from there. Lovely guys, thank you very much. So here are, I'm up on the screen. Give me a little second. Here are the answers. I've kept the nine, nine, nine verbing, nine and number age on the screen as it will help you with your identification. Okay guys, so now we're going to get, I'm gonna give you a bit of time to go through the answers 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. A couple of minutes to try this yourselves. I'll be back in a few minutes to go through the answers. So please complete the activity. Answer 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And let's see how you get on based on our prediction exercises. Good luck and speak to you all soon. Good work, everyone. A few more seconds, and then we'll go through the answers together. Okay, guys, let's get started. And um, a few more seconds before I come back onto the screen, but please send your comments in. Please send your answers into the comments, label them 15 answer, 16 answer, 17 answer. I want to have a look through your comments as we go through everything together. So please comment your answers in and we'll have a look at them together, guys. Awesome. So hope that you enjoyed that activity. I know I enjoyed going through it together. I enjoy seeing you apply your methods in the comments and seeing them come through um, as well. Fantastic. So let's see how well you got on as we analyze all of the answers together. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, guys, so um, let's have a look. Number 15, falling on an outstretched hand is a typical cause of a mm of the elbow. Typically a cause of a mm of the elbow. I love making that sound, by the way. That's my blank sound. So guys, some of you have written dislocation. Let's see if you are correct. Fantastic for those that wrote dislocation. Amazing. A dislocation of the elbow. It was a noun related to the phrase. Good work. Number 16, upper limb fracture should be elevated by a means of a what? Some of you have written words like sling. So let's lock in sling and see if you are correct. Well done, guys. Sling is the correct answer. It is a noun and it is related to the word fracture. Now number 17, 
make sure the patient isn't wearing any what on the part of the body where the plaster back slab is going to get placed. Some of you have written jewelry. So let's lock in jewelry as the correct word. And it is well done. We identified the noun. It was related to something that is worn as we identified in our clues uh, by analyzing the language. So jewelry is correct. Well done. Three out of three so far for a lot of you. You're doing great. Number 18, check to see whether swollen limbs are blank or increasing in size. So some of you are saying throbbing. So you've taken my advice on board, verbing, and that would be correct. Throbbing is the correct answer. So throbbing or increasing in size with ing. Well done. Number 19, in a plaster back slab, there is a layer of something closest to the skin. So some of you have worn crepe. Some of you have written compression cotton. We're on the right track, guys. There are two different kinds of answers that we can have here. The answer is stockinet. Stockinet is the noun. So we can write stockinet by itself, or we can write cotton stockinet, non-compression stockinet as well. So we can have three different combinations here. Stockinet is the important word. It's the noun. Cotton and non-compression are adjectives describing the noun. So if you had included those alongside, alongside stockinet, then that is correct. And well done to a lot of you that have written those different combinations. But the important word there is stockinet. Finally, number 20, patients aged what and over shouldn't be given the higher dosages of pain relief. That was 70, either as a numeral, 70 as a word with years or years as optional. So as long as we've written in the number 70 or the word 70, we've got the mark. So well done. If you had written 70 years, either short or long, you still would have gotten the mark. So that is good. But the important words are the numbers there of seven and 70, guys. So well done. And I think a lot of you have done really, really well in that activity. A lot of you have actually gotten full marks. So you've actually taken the advice on board and applied that well. So congratulations, guys. You've learned two different techniques for text matching and for gap fill today that you can then apply to your reading part A activity as you do your own practice. So let's review the session today. So part A tips, guys. Remember, first look at the four texts before looking at the questions to get the overall understanding. Don't forget to do the exam in order. Underline and highlight your keywords as you analyze, particularly important for gap fill and short answer. And then having quickly looked at the four texts before, predicts which, predict which text you can find the answer in based on your overall understanding of the central topic. It will save you a lot of time and is required for you to do reading part A in the express time. In addition to that, make sure you learn the format of the exam as a whole. Take note of your headings and subheadings to help you narrow down the correct text to help you read and save time. It's also good for you, as we did in the second activity today, to predict logical answers for gap fill and short answer questions to help you with the context of your grammatical knowledge. Don't forget to use a highlighter or pen to highlight your keywords in the question stem. And ultimately, don't forget, practice makes perfect. Practice the technique again and again and again and again. Do what you do well, improve on what you're not doing, ideally with some expert teacher advice, and rinse and repeat until you are ready to ace your OET reading and your OET exam as a whole. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this session today. Let me know in the chat box if you did enjoy this session today. And also give us a like, give us a comment, give us something to indicate that you did enjoy this session today. But you've learned a couple of things that you can take away for your additional reading practice in your own time now as part of this session. So guys, now is there hasn't been a better time for you if you're looking to take your OET preparation to the next step is to engage in a full preparation course with expert teacher feedback, a mini mock exam, mock exams as a whole, um, including reading sections, writing corrections, video courses, question bank activities, 
all as part of a course and we at swoosh english will do that for you so it is valentine's day next week and we want to spread the love by helping you show yourself some love this valentine's day by investing in yourself so we are now currently giving 20 percent off selected oet preparation courses with discount code love guys so discount code love is what you need to get access to 20 percent off an oet preparation course with us at Swoosh English. All you have to do is visit www.swooshenglish.com forward slash love. That's www.swooshenglish.com forward slash love. The codes and the comments links are coming into the chat box now, guys. The links in the comments are coming into the chat box. Click on that link to get started today and enjoy 20% off an OET preparation course with us at Swoosh English. Also, guys, maybe you're looking for some more free content. And guess what, guys? We will be offering you more free content as well. So if you're looking for more expert tips and advice to help you pass your exam first time, well, we have more free OET online preparation masterclasses like the one that you saw today. All you have to do is click on the following link that is coming in in a second, and I'll show you the instructions to get access to more exam preparation strategies, free tips and advice on all skills, your questions answered live a bit like today, plus other bonuses and surprises, guys. So how can you do that? Well, if you're watching on YouTube today, all you have to do is click the show more button in the description. So you'll see here it says click show more in the description. Once you clicked on that, there will be a link in there that says OET Swoosh Masterclass. So click on the link that says OET Swoosh English Masterclass and you will get access to that free masterclass sign-in. Um, you might be watching on the OET official page. That is the exact same process. Click on show more, and then click on the link inside to get access to your free masterclass. Now, if you're watching guys on Facebook, there are two things that you can do to get access to that. And first thing is there will be a link in the description as well. So click the link in the description and then just check out the comments that are inside the chat box as well. So you'll see the comments coming through on Facebook now that will give you the free link for you to join our free masterclasses. So either in the description or inside the comments that are coming through. Now, guys, uh, alternatively, if you're unable to see the comments today for whatever reason, or you can't see the description for any reason, all you have to do is give our team an email at inquiries at swooshenglish.com. That's inquiries at swooshenglish.com and write masterclass. So give us an email at inquiries at swooshenglish.com, write masterclass, and our team will be happy to get you set up today. All right, guys. Well, that is the end of the session. Thanks a lot for coming along today. I hope that you enjoyed. Well done for um, showing off your technique incredibly well for your OVT reading part A. Make sure you take that technique that you've learned today for those two activities and apply that to further reading part E, part A activities. But don't forget to neglect, don't forget to not neglect, sorry, reading part B and especially reading part C. Don't forget about your listening, your speaking and your writing. Ensure that you are ready to ace your OVT exam on a holistic basis by making sure that you are simply ready on your exam day. And that's what we at Swoosh English can do. We can ensure that you are ready before you take your test to give you the best chance of passing your exam on that first attempt or that next attempt. So guys, throw us a couple more comments. Hope that you enjoyed the session today. Indu has just said a lovely comment today. I'm gonna to bring that up on the screen. Indu has said, thank you for the wonderful session. Well, Indu, thank you very much for joining us. And Jennifer has also said, I enjoyed, thank you as well. I see lots of more comments coming in, guys. Thank you very much for your well wishes. So remember, before I finish, 20% off Swoosh English preparation courses this Valentine's Day. Go to www.swooshenglish.com forward slash love and use this current code love to get your access to your 20% off Swoosh English preparation course or join one of our free masterclasses using the comments in the chat box or the link in the description. So guys, I'm Scott from Swoosh English. Pleasure hosting you all today for this OVT All-Star session. I will see you again for the next one. Good luck with your OET prep and hope to see some more of you at Swoosh English very, very soon. Take care. Have a great day. See ya.